Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast. Escalator was once a brand, but it is now a generic term. Learn how a company lost its trademark and how to prevent it from happening to your brand. I'm Wayne Carroll, your host, here to share valuable insights, stories, and strategies for succeeding in intellectual property. Let's dive into the game of IP and learn how to win. This podcast is not legal advice, but is strictly educational and informational. Listening to this podcast or reading show notes does not establish an attorney-client relationship. This episode, we're talking about the escalator trademark, how a successful invention led to a lost trademark. The escalator was a brand that was registered in 1900 by a man who worked on a a model of it that was working. And then he joined Otis Escalator Company and transferred the trademark over to them. Over years, until 1950, they were able to keep that as a registered trademark. But in 1950, there was an order from the patent office that the trademark was now generic. There are other examples of Trademarks that were once registered as trademarks, but are now generic. And we'll talk about some of the ways that that happens. So in the escalator case, they had a patent that helped them establish their market. And they were having success. But the challenge was how they lost the case in a large part was the company themselves referred to it as an escalator. They referred to it as the noun. Rather than the the, tra- the trademark application was for a moving staircase. So there was a generic term for it that they had selected. The problem was they didn't use that generic term and encourage the public to associate the generic term for the noun and the term escalator as a brand. They found it more convenient to just refer to it as an escalator. And since they had a trademark, nobody was opposing it. And eventually somebody did. And so one way a trademark can be opposed is someone can go to the trademark office and and file what's called a cancellation proceeding. And today it's filed with the trademark trial and appeal board. If this happens, then the person seeking the trademark to be canceled files a complaint It's a litigation process. They file a complaint and the trademark owner gets notified and has time to file a response. And then they have exchange of documents, prove evidence back and forth. And in this case, and often what what it comes down to, well, is really that the question is, what does the public think? Has the public adopted this as a generic term, a term for what it is, and and has completely abandoned the use of who this refers to. This is important for small businesses because even if you don't have a major brand, if you are using your brand in a way that is a noun instead of the a source identifier saying this is a brand specific to our company and nobody else gets to use this then and especially if then others in discussing your your product start using that name you may say yay they're pointing to us you know everybody knows this is our our brand and they're pointing to us that's great well it's not actually great and it is possible to correct that early on. An- another one that came close was Xerox. Now, there wasn't a case that I know of where it was um, can- uh, attempted to be canceled, but people were actually saying Xerox this, Xerox that. And the company Xerox, they actually put out advertisements and worked hard and they would look for if somebody's reporting or news outlets are using the term Xerox in the term of a noun or a verb, then 
they would send them a notice and say, don't use it that way. That's our brand. Don't do that. And would ask for a retraction um, or tell them next time, make sure you you do it this way. So those are some of the things you, you need to do is monitor how others are using your trademark. And so one way that a trademark can be canceled is by someone going to the trademark office, filing a cancellation proceeding, and then presenting evidence and getting the trademark office to agree that the term is now generic. Another way that this happens, and this actually happened with the term super glue. So super glue was once a brand for the the generic term, which was on the trademark registration was cyanocrylite adhesive. I may have butchered that. I did my best. And part of the problem was they had such a hard term. And yes, that was the, you know, the chemical term of the type of adhesive, but it was such a difficult term that they didn't use it and other people didn't use it as super glue brand cyano, cyanocrylite adhesive. And if they had done that, and, and what would probably be a better thing is for them to come up with a generic term, shorten that term, and, you know, call it cyanoadhesive or something like that. Create a generic term if there isn't one. If the public isn't familiar with the what you're offering, if it's new, like in this case, super glue was kind of a new chemical. And when, when they went to court over it, this was after people had started sniffing super glue. And that's how the news actually reported it is, you know, we've got this problem of you know, sniffing super glue. We we got to make sure kids aren't doing this. It's dangerous. Um, and if you're a kid and listening, don't try it. It is dangerous. So the how the news and how other people use your trademark can be the risk, and how you use your trademark the it's yourself is also a big risk. Those are the two pieces of evidence. Now, oftentimes in these cases. So with the super glue case, a company was using, they had their, their, their trademark was permabond and they had this tagline uh, that had, you know, permabond, the super glue and, you know, with their tagline. So they were using super glue as the generic term to differentiate and saying, well, permabond is our brand. And super glue is what it is. And so they were being sued for using what was a registered trademark. Well, in whenever you get sued, there's the opportunity to counter sue. And that's what happened here. They filed a, a response with a counterclaim in the same lawsuit. And the counterclaim was this is a generic term. And so after it went through court and actually went up on appeal. Um, the The court and the appeals court agreed. This super glue is a generic term. This is what people call it. So one of the things as your company grows, I encourage you to have watches um, in terms of like a, a watch service that alerts you when somebody uses your brand in media, anywhere online, uh, you know, searching for what is the public doing with your trademark and collecting that. If they're not doing what you want to, you need to let them know right away. And this also is very helpful because if they are using it the right way, most of the time, you can have a file and just keep saving, you know, oh, here's another one, here's another one, and just uh, don't, don't just get a link if it's on a website. Do a uh, print to PDF or you know somehow capture the actual what was published and put it in your file. Gather that evidence ahead of time and stay aware of how other people are using your brand. A, another brand that has worked hard 
to uh, avoid becoming generic is Kleenex. And yes, some people call that tissue you blow your nose into a Kleenex, but Kleenex themselves is very careful that they do not do that. They have Kleenex, when, whenever they put it on their, their boxes, it's Kleenex brand facial tissue. So they make it really clear, this is a facial tissue. This is the generic term that our competitors can use. Don't use our trademark. And, and the other thing is, by monitoring use, if a competitor, not just the news media, is using your trademark, especially as a generic term, you need to stop them right away, whether through lawsuits, um, you know, contacting them with cease and desist and seeing if you can get them to stop without going through the cost of a lawsuit. But it's up to you to stop them. It is not up to the trademark office. It's not up to the Federal Trade Commission. They, you know, if somebody is is knocking off, is selling counterfeits of a brand, the Federal Trademark, uh, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission may get involved. But otherwise, it's really up to you to police your brand, to make sure it is used correctly and that it's not being used, especially as a generic term, because it can become a generic term. And this usually happens after the brand uh, receives a lot of media attention and things seem to be going great. And then you lose that brand and, and you have to start over in differentiating yourself. You no longer have that brand. When, when you are planning a trademark strategy, it's important to work with a trademark attorney and find out what is the strategy? What is the brand you're picking in the beginning? Sometimes brands are actually generic when people start using them. And then they later try to register them and they don't have a way to protect them. But the other one, as we discussed today, is they can become generic after they started as a coin term, as a completely unique trademark. So to avoid what is called genericide of trademarks, make sure you know how to use your brand. Contact me if you have questions or would like a free consultation. I'm Wayne Carroll, and this is Leveraging Inspiration.